What's up guys, Chris VA Travels, and I'm at the Fredericksburg Battlefield Park. I'm going to take a tour of the big National Cemetery and take a walk down this sunken road. I'll just tell you what some of these monuments uh, up here are and uh, just get, get some history. So, yeah, first to tell you, there's a, a little museum inside right there. That's, that's where you check in. Uh, that building was built in the 1930s when this was turned into a park. Um, and just to uh, just let you know, I'm all about these old houses that a uh, home owned by the Hall family uh, was here uh, back before the Civil War. So, yeah, we're right off Lafayette Boulevard, which at the time was the Telegraph Road, led down to Richmond. And uh, cut through, there's the sunken road. So, yeah, so the big national cemetery was authorized by Congress right after the Civil War, 1865, and they began uh, burying bodies, 1866. So, and it, bodies were brought here from uh, Spotsylvania Courthouse, uh, Battle of the Wilderness, Chancellorsville, and of course the Battle of Fredericksburg. And then it's saying here between 1869 and 1945, 300 more veterans from World War I, World War II, and the Spanish-American War were buried here as well. Yeah, so here we go. So yeah, uh, 15,200 soldiers are buried here, and they only know the names of 2,500. That's pretty crazy. And the first big monument over here, this is dedicated to the Fifth Corps and it was erected by General Daniel Butterfield, participated in the Battle of Fredericksburg, and he helped have this built. It was built in 1901, same year he died. So, cool little cannonballs down there. Uh, let's see, regiments, batteries, and organizations out of New York, Pennsylvania. You walk around here. And uh, over there is the superintendent's house that was built in 1906. And the uh, overseer uh, of the park used to stay there. And it, it was built to mimic the, uh, the War Department building up in Washington, D.C. So there you go. And like I say, Butterfield, commander during the Battle of Fredericksburg, at one time Joseph Hooker, uh, General Meade, Gettysburg fame, and had over 35,000 casualties uh, between when they were organized, 1862, uh, July, and then uh, disbanded, of course, after the war ended. And these are mostly all battles in the region. I guess, obviously, Gettysburg is a ways out there. Um, yeah, Appomattox. Um, yeah, I already looked over here. And to tell you, these kind of larger rectangular graves are, are of the known soldiers. And when you see these smaller, these smaller square, these are unknown soldiers. And just to tell you something, okay, these are the plot numbers, eight, seven. I hate walking on graves, but walk more over here. Okay, so they know these guys, it looks like. And so, yeah, this is Willis Hill. Uh, next door, you've got Marie Hill. Uh, that's where Brompton sits. I made a video on that not, not too long ago. And, all right, we know these guys. So, and there's a series of five hills that lure, uh, lead kind of northwest throughout the city. Uh, this is one of the biggest Willis Hill, the smaller Marie Hill. There's a little saddle dips down. You hit that. Then you've got a hill where Mary Washington College sits. Then you've got one where kind of the Snowden, kind of the medical center area is for anybody in the area. And then you've got the fifth hill, Fall Hill, close to the river. So, all right. And this is dedicated to the 127th Regiment uh, Pennsylvania Volunteers. Looks like Colonel Jennings. He was uh, 3rd Brigade, 2nd Division of the 2nd Corps. And uh, yeah, I believe they were part of the Irish Brigade. It looks like I see a little shamrock up there. Oh, sorry, I'm not pay paying attention to what I'm filming. Yeah. 
All right, casual. Oh yeah, and so they participated in only two battles: the first and then the second battle of Fredericksburg. And this, uh, yeah, they were only around for uh, for about nine months. I believe it was August of '62 they formed, and then they dismantled uh, maybe like June of '63. All right, we walk over here. Uh, big flag. And yeah, you can see what a great position this is. Uh, see all of Fredericksburg. Looks like they have a lot of the uh, the known soldiers up front. And something I wanted to point out over here when you see these little graves, uh, this is actually this is uh, obviously the plot number. But when you see this uh, number below, it, it tells you how many bodies are, are buried down here. So there are two soldiers, unknown soldiers in this plot and I've seen some go up to nine I believe there's one that has uh, 12 soldiers uh, buried all right so this guy Robertson Robinson and I'll get to that one the biggest statue back there and to let you know, if you come, uh, there's a place to eat over here, Battlefield Restaurant down below. They've just got basic hamburgers, uh, real cheap. And next door, there's a building that sells artifacts, uh, all kinds of old uh, sabers, of course, bullets. Uh, they've got flock coats, all, all kinds of uh, historical things you, you can purchase. Joseph... Moish killed at the Battle of the Wilderness. Okay. Yeah. Let's walk and take a look at the front of it. All right, 83rd New York Volunteers, 9th Regiment. And I think first I'm going to walk down and take a look at this plaque. So a new development. I haven't even uh I've been here, so I used to live quarter of a mile from here Richard Hill oh boy he was young he was born in uh, 1845 so Arthur Moore Hill A drum major over here. And for anyone, anyone who doesn't know, these are all Union soldiers uh, interred here. And there's a smaller Confederate cemetery in the city. Take a tour of that at some other point. All right, and the Washington Artillery out of New Orleans was positioned up here. And yeah, talk about a good position. And this was General Longstreet's uh, portion. Uh, you could, obviously, Robert E. Lee was uh, head commander, and you can think of their army was divided into two. Longstreet held this corps up here, and then Jackson uh, covered the line further south. And hmm. All right, so yeah, right here, nine bodies down there. Yeah, like I say, Long Street's line. And his artillery commander made a comment after they had set up that uh, not even a chicken could survive the uh, the crossing. And it, at the time, well, just, okay, we're kind of, kind of walked a little ways, but it, in front of the Battle of Fredericksburg at the time only stretched four, about four, block, five blocks uh, from the river. And then after that, you had a uh, big fairgrounds, and, and then which led up to the uh, the famous stone wall ahead. All right, take a look at this first. Uh, May third, eighteen sixty-three. All right, so this would be the second battle of Fredericksburg. I'm glad they showed that some uh, some appreciation. Okay, here we go. Yeah, second battle of Fredericksburg. Yeah, a lot of people forget about this one, and this is where uh, Union General Sedgwick took the hill 
uh, defeating Confederate General Jubal Early. And it was pretty much uh, part of the Battle of Chancellorsville. So yeah, Cedric uh, took the hill. They went up the plank road, basically Route 3, and met up with Confederate soldiers uh, at Salem Church, where they ended up losing that battle and ended up crossing Banks Ford uh, to the, uh, crossing the Rappahannock in, in retreat. All right, so, all right, I'm gonna shut the camera off and uh, kind of walk over to that big statue. But uh, yeah, here we are, uh, biggest statue here in the in the cemetery, and uh, dedicated to Andrews Atkinson Humphreys, Third Division, uh, Fifth Army Corps, and he led. All right, I'm not going to get into the total uh, of everything that happened in, in the battle here, but I, I can give you a summary. December 13th, beginning at 12 o'clock, several waves uh, of uh, soldiers uh, began crossing, like I had mentioned earlier, the fairgrounds, uh, lasting until the evening. And one of the last divisions to come forward was Humphrey's division. I believe it was about 4 p.m. He was a reserve division. And he was actually, during the day, sitting on the other side of the river, um, all the way up near the Phillips house, which was the headquarters of Ambrose Burnside crossed the pontoon bridges, had to come down, he had to cross this canal ditch, which at the time was, I think, about six uh, feet deep. It's where Kenmore Avenue uh, sits for anybody in the area. Had to cross the famous Swale. Um, it's kind of a dip in the road. If anybody knows here on Lafayette Boulevard, there's a 7-Eleven right up the street. It's kind of right in that area. Um, as they were crossing, uh, soldiers uh, from earlier in the day who had been repaired were tugging at their coats saying, don't go, it's a suicide mission. But uh, yeah, they continued forward and uh, they came the closest uh, to the wall. I believe they were the second to last uh, division to, to make an attempt. So yeah, he had two brigades come forward. Like I say, they were in reserves and they were uh, really green, really green soldiers who hadn't seen much, uh, much action. And yeah, I can tell you, Humphreys had uh, two horses shot out underneath him. He led the charge. Uh, he, he was uh, up front. Um, one was a $17,000 horse. And the two I know one was uh, Tyler's. And I don't have the other guy's name. Um, Al Alabach. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, noted for their bravery, so. And it's pretty cool. They've got these uh, giant guns here as kind of decoration. And these kind of poems, it looks like here. All right, take a uh, walk back here. And if you ever want to come and visit, come uh, during Memorial Day. Um, yeah, they have a big light show. If you come here uh, during the evening, they put up lanterns commemorating the fallen soldiers and it, it's a pretty cool event. Ooh, and as I always say, bring bug spray. You can probably see all the uh, bugs swarming around some flowers down there one of the graves and i'm walking back here i remember there were some world war one soldiers who have some bigger tombstones in, in the back there
not too much going on over here. A lot of unknown soldiers, as you can see. And looks like he died in 1943. Uh, this guy, World War I, um, born 1890, died 1943. Francis Boggs. And Spanish-American War, okay. Colonel of the 3rd Virginia Infantry. Whew. And over there is the Willis Cemetery. Oh. Take a look at these. All these guys died in 1943, 1944. Yeah. So as I had said, we're on Willis Hill. Uh, Willis Hill was named after Henry Willis, prominent Fredericksburg uh, figure who kind of first settled the area. He had a big, uh, big house uh, built here at one time. So, and he, he was uh, responsible for establishing Fredericksburg as a city back in uh, 1728. So, all right, yeah, I'm gonna walk over, take, ooh, take a look at that Willis Cemetery. Okay, and it looks like this is the same plaque that I first read down there. And yeah, let me first take a, a look at this Willis Cemetery. Some other things to tell you about Henry Willis. He was married three times. Well, if you want to know a lot about him, I mentioned him in my video of Brompton. I did uh, about a month ago. But his third wife was the aunt of George Washington and their great grandson, married the nephew of Napoleon Bonaparte. So, name dropping. All right, so this saddles down and goes back up to Marie Hill uh, where Brompton sits and uh, owned by the Marie family, of course. Here's the Marie Mill, kind of neat. Looks like there's a cannon sticking out of the window. This is the uh, railroad bridge that was taken down during the, uh, during the Civil War. Oh yeah, so George Washington's nephew. Um, all right, so I'm not sure if I can go in here, but this is their uh, little graveyard. And I think Henry Willis, I might be wrong, but I think he's buried over at the cemetery over at the St. George's Church. I'll have to look that up. Oh, all right, I can go in here. Um... Go to these big ones first, John Spotswood Welford. In the Welford, well, I won't get into the Battle of Chancellorsville, but I'm assuming that's the same family that owned the uh, Catherine Furnace. Uh, Francis Welford, uh, yeah, I guess his wife. And, uh, oh yeah, that thing totally is, I uh, can't read that. George Washington Lewis. All right, he is the gonna be the son, I believe, of, he's gonna be the son of Fielding and Betty, Fielding Lewis and Betty Washington from over at Kenmore, Betty Washington, George Washington's sister. So yeah, the nephew of uh, George Washington. I'm not sure if these are graves or these are just kind of marking something off. Ah, yeah, I'm getting hot now. Definitely starting to sweat. Okay, Colonel Bird Willis. Um, I don't know if that's their son or grandson, but anyway. Oh, these are kind of cool looking uh, headstones over here. The Campbell family. Oh, Page family. All right, Fanny Page. Oh, Fanny Page Welford. Yeah, all these first families are, um, wow, is this a child? Because that's kind of a small 1821 to 1858. Okay. But, uh, 
yeah, all these big old families kind of eventually blend together. I uh, can't make that out. Another Welford. So I guess the Willis family uh, blended into the Welford. John Welford died 1860 in his 67th year. Uh, Carmichael, Carmichael. Susan Welford. And that says Rebecca Welford, wife of William Welford. All right, I'm going to walk out, take a look at those guns, and, and read that plaque over there. And uh, over there, you've got Mary Washington College. I believe that's going to be the baseball field, if you can see those lights. Oh, yeah, and I also wanted to point out, here's a cannonball hole. That's pretty cool. And I don't know if these are still bullet hole. Uh, yeah, probably most likely. Oh, holes, I can see chips in here. All right, yeah, let me take a walk over there. Set some guns up over here. And yeah, these must be iron because the uh, brass ones end up turning green. Yeah, we'll talk about the uh, Confederate artillery. Battered buildings, and yeah, there are a bunch of buildings up here during the Civil War. Here's a great photo, May 1864. Okay, building up on Willis Hill. Artillery was effective weapon. Here we are, yeah, heart of the Washington Artillery. And this is where most of the attacks uh, came, like I say, the fairgrounds. And I don't know if you can see that tree line was about as close as uh, Union Army ever got. And so I would assume that would be Humphrey's uh, division. And there's Hanover Street, one of the main paths up to the heights. So, okay, yeah, Edward Alexander, Colonel in the Washington Artillery. So, walk over here. This is gonna walk down. I see another plaque down there. It's gonna walk down to the, go down to the sunken road. All right, good. This one sits in the shade. Confederates on the Heights. I'll loop around. Yeah, that takes you the road that goes down. And like I say, about 11 a.m., 12 o'clock is when they started uh, sending the first waves forward. This is a pretty good painting right here. And yeah, you'll see the Innes house uh, right there. Martha Stevens house, which she owned that house as well at, at the time. And Hanover Street. Um, I can't think of what building that is. But... Okay, so eight divisions uh, poured forward throughout the day. So that barn looking building over there actually at one time was a Catholic school. All right, so this road takes you down to the sunken road. Uh, 
and up on Marie Hill. Like I say, we're on the little saddle between Willis Hill and Marie Hill, and you're gonna have Brompton back behind those, uh, those magnolia trees. And here we are, the famous Sunken Road. And there's the Innes house. Uh, what's up guys? I uh, decided I, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this one short. Gonna make this video on just the National Cemetery. Uh, it's really hot out there. I didn't bring water. Uh, plus there's a bunch of tour groups going on. It's just it's too difficult to film. So yeah, I'll come back at a second point and do a walk down the sunken road. So yeah, I'm gonna go over to the Battlefield restaurant, grab some lunch, and, and get out of here. So as always, if you like these kinds of videos, like and subscribe and see you.